Greetings, everyone. Welcome aboard. Joseph James here, May 24th, 2010, schooltrade.com. Had a great day in the room. Here's your live term recap. Before we talk about the trades we took today, I want to remind you guys we have a blog out there. Our blog is filled with articles and videos and so much information, guys, for free on the blog. If you have questions about any of the terms we talk about, if you have questions about any of the techniques we use in the room, guys, head over to the blog. Use that search box there. Okay, so we talk about a breaker pattern, type in breaker pattern. Want to learn more about the DX pattern, type in the DX pattern there. Want to learn more about trade management? You guessed it. Type in trade management and search our blog. Lots of great stuff in the blog, guys. And while you're there, don't forget, subscribe to the blog, subscribe to our newsletter. That way you're always kept up to date with all the brand new stuff. We're adding two to three videos a day right now, whether it be trade management stuff, different articles, right? New patterns, so make sure you guys are watching that stuff on the blog. Let's see here. Two I took two trades. I was waiting for a Euro trade to set up when we closed the room this morning. So for all the members out there, we're watching this Euro uh, this Euro DX pattern right now. Uh, only took two trades today, of course. We'll talk about that in a second. Of course, uh, 1030 and 1043, both on crude. Both of them are breaker patterns, trading with the trend. So 41 ticks, 410 USD. We're now 14,600 for the month now here in May, guys. Wonderful month of May, as you can see. But the big number down bottom, 48,000, guys. We're just a couple days away from hitting that $50,000 mark. And, of course, we like that because we're... We're ahead of the halfway point of the year. So we're trying to make that $10,000 per month. $50,000 would be a good place to be here this time of year. So we're hoping, hoping to get that done here this week for you guys. So keep you guys posted there. What's the most important thing that happened today? Well, today was a Monday, but it was a holiday. Okay, in many places, today was Victoria Day in Canada. Uh, we had, of course, uh, Pentecost, I think, in, uh, in, in many places of Europe today. So we expected you know, this to be a kind of a slow start to the day and a slow start to what could be kind of a sluggish week this week. Now look at you know if we, if we look at the calendar this week, okay we have a holiday Memorial Day holiday is this is this coming next Monday so a week from today. Now here in the U.S. Memorial Day uh, is is a real popular holiday kind of the kickoff of the summertime here in the U.S. So we do expect it to be a pretty uh, well we do expect people to start celebrating that next Monday holiday possibly Thursday and Friday this week okay so we're looking forward to you know potentially a sluggish week ahead of us we've got consumer confidence tomorrow we have GDP on Thursday okay we had a holiday Victoria Day in Canada and of course right the the European holiday today and then next Monday we have another Memorial Day holiday so you know we're we got a holiday week we're going to expect the worst we'll prepare for both okay so we'll hope for the best obviously but we'll definitely want to prepare for the worst. Now when I say the worst, what I mean is the worst possible thing that can happen here would be we get no volume all week. Everybody goes right to the lake, everyone goes right to the beach, right, and they don't really go to the market. Okay, that's the worst thing to happen today this this week if it happens. Okay, so expect to see a little bit of a sluggish week, but of course we're gonna keep our eyes open. We'll be waiting for it. We'll plan for both, right? We'll plan we'll plan to have a great market this week, but if we don't, we'll be ready for it. Now for today, of course, this morning, we do expect this morning to be kind of a slow, sluggish start of the week because of the holiday, because it's a Monday to begin with. So let's look at the dollar first, right? The dollar will give me a little bit more direction as far as what to think about the day ahead. Now, remember what happened last week? We had this big strong move up in the dollar last week. Big strong move up. And then we came crumbling back down. Well, now here we are going sideways right after we pulled back off of those highs. Okay, so here we are now in the dollar trading sideways here right now over multiple days. Okay, so two weeks ago, we had that big, right, the big flash crash. We had lots of volume, lots of volatility, the dollar rise. Okay, then of course things started to slow down a little bit. Right, people started to kind of consolidate into a sideways range. The dollar pulls off the highs, and now we're kind of dealing with that sideways chop here all the way from late on Thursday afternoon last week. So a sideways dollar, what does that mean for us? Sideways dollar, the dollar moves the other markets because it's denomination currency, so we expect to see sideways with everything else. Now, we saw exactly that. I mean, we, we really hit the nail on the head on this one because we looked over at crude oil, and crude oil this morning, guys, now this is one of the reasons why we like to do our morning prep. Guys, if you haven't come join us yet at 745, uh, I really suggest you do because at 745 to 8 o'clock to 815, we go over all of our morning prep, our tech prep and our mental prep. And this is the type of stuff we look at. For example, here on crude, what do we see this morning? We talked about this a couple times today in the room, guys, in between taking trades. Here in the crude oil, we noticed this morning at 8 a.m., what do we have? Sideways market. Right, double tops, double bottoms over here on my slower time frame chart. Okay, so sideways, sideways, sideways. 
right? Real easy to see that, right? Double tops, double bottoms. You get a sideways market there on crude. Now, normally a sideways market, you're going to think what? Well, I'll wait for price to break out, right? That would normally be a, a new trader or one of our members would probably say, okay, sideways market, let's wait for price to either break to the upside or break the downside before I start trading. But remember, guys, sideways markets do not mean you can't trade them. In fact, what do we look for in sideways markets? We look for a combination of enough wide, right, enough width to the range. We look for a combination of a nice wide sideways market. That's one. Number two is, want to see good volume. And number three is, what do we need to see? Widening average to range. Okay, so three things we look for to tell us when I can trade a sideways market. One is, do I have a wide enough sideways market, right? A little 10 tick range isn't going to help. Okay, do I have enough room to get these trades up and down inside the sideways range? On crude, you know, boy, a good, a good rule of thumb would be about 40, 50 ticks wide, right? If you've got 40, 50 ticks wide, you should be looking perfect to trade sideways market. We then need to see volume, right? Number two, got to see volume. We got to see that people are actually trading inside of this range. A lot of times in sideways ranges, it's there because there's no volume at all. Okay, so we got to be careful about that. Sideways range, make sure it's wide enough, right? That get, give or take 50, 40, 50 ticks there. Make sure we have enough volume, so wait for the big money in the market. And then what was that last one? Average to range. Now let's look at the average to range here on the right side of your screen here. Okay, here's your ATR on the right. Right, there's your ATR. Now what I want you to notice here is, remember how we use ATR. ATR is measured not by the actual, uh, the actual value here, but it's measured in comparison to the previous ATR reading. Now at 8 o'clock this morning, what do we see? we had the average to range was rising. And then come at 9 o'clock, well, I'm sorry, after 10 o'clock, excuse me, we then see average to range is falling. Okay, so before 10 o'clock, it's rising. After 10 o'clock, as you can see, it kind of chopped around the top here and then began to fall. Okay, now what does this exactly mean for us day traders? Well, once again, remember, we saw sideways markets on crude. But then we saw here at 8.30, right, what do we have? ATR was rising. So we had widening average to range, a nice wide sideways range, and we had some pretty decent volume at about 10 o'clock, 10.15. So we had everything we needed to be able to trade this sideways range. Remember, the dollar had already given us kind of a heads up that we'd probably be seeing that, right? There's the, there's the dollar again, that sideways range in the dollar means we're probably going to see sideways range something else. We saw it on crude. But then remember, that average to range, that rising ATR, really gave us that confidence we needed to get in and start trading this market. Now, notice, though, what happened after 10.30. After 10.30, all of a sudden, yep, you got it, starts dropping again. Average to range begins dropping. Now, when I see the average two range dropping on top of the fact that we have a sideways range here, now all of a sudden, now this, this great opportunity becomes a danger zone. Okay, so after 10.30 this morning, then we started realizing, wait a second, this thing's starting to slow down. It's starting to get very sideways here. And you can see, really, for the most part, right, it starts getting a tighter range here. Right, average two range narrows down. The trading range on the, on the crude narrows as well. And we started seeing red paste of the tape. That was the heads up that we probably should start looking right to sit on our hands and wait for some better price action.